Good afternoon and welcome to another session of Teams in 20. Today we are going to be talking about managing your data. Let's get started because there's lots to go through as always. Uh, you know, these sessions are really set up just to, I suppose, inspire you to go and learn more. And that's why they're so, so quick. Um, but just to introduce myself, if you haven't seen me before, my name is Jo Johnston and I'm a Senior Customer Success Manager at Microsoft, looking after some of our big modern work uh, customers. Now, today's session, I'm hoping that you are going to go away um, and take a look, deeper look at your data. Have a think about, you know, are you confidently sharing your data with people? Do you really know where it is? Um, are you happy with the amount of data that you've got? How many files and, and folders that you have and the structure of those? Um, and the as part of today's agenda, we're also going to take a look at some of the document management best practices and and think about the the what tool when when it comes to to data storage because that's a, a question I get asked a lot okay now let's kick off with a little bit about document best practice now when we think about managing our data there are some key principles that if we could follow a little bit better I think it would help us manage our data in a more secure um, and simplified way now, what does good document management look like now these are my tips these are what I tell my customers so you've probably got some of your own and if you have that's great we would love to to share so I um, I'm going to actually, while I'm thinking about this, put some polls in the chat as well. I'm going to kick one off right now. Let me just launch this one. My first top tip is all about single source of, of truth. Now, what do I mean by that? We don't want clones of your files. You know, we don't want five, six of the same document being uh, pushed around the organization. And where I often see this go wrong is where colleagues or customers have um, are still sending attachments in emails. So if I send that attachment um, to six people, I've now got seven copies of that document floating around the organization. The best way to probably do that is to, rather than share the document, share a link to the document. So you retain the original one. And, and that helps you have a bit more control as well, because maybe you don't want everybody to edit that document, you just want them to view it or add comments. Um, and maybe you don't want them to download it as well. So my rule number one, is really trying to have a single source of truth. And I know that's not always possible, but where, where possible, just try. Um, and I popped in the in the uh, chat there a, a poll on, you know, when was the last time you had a kind of clean up of, of your data? Good news is that uh, looks like a lot of you have done something in the last less than six months, but you know, a good 50% of, uh, well, just under 50% of uh, of not, in, and looks like you've got some work to do, including me, I'm sure. Um, next tip would be be accurate, up-to-date and relevant. Now, this is especially um, important for those more public documents, things like policies that you'd get on your SharePoint site or your internet site. Um, yeah, how many times have you gone to a site or opened a document and you've gone, this is totally out of date. You lose total confidence in everything that's in that document and maybe even everything in that site. So making sure that your data is, is relevant, have a look at your storage, have a look at what you've got in those files. If it's been three or four years since you last looked at that document, is it still relevant? Um, and the reason this is, is really important as well to your organization is storage costs money. So every time you've got six versions of the same document or every time you're keeping that legacy data that you actually don't need, it's costing money to store. And, and that's what you know a lot of my customers are trying to reduce down that SharePoint cost. The other thing is uh, you know, things like Copilot and AI, it's going to bring back results based on the data that's available. And if the data that's available is, is not great, then you, know, you want to give it the best um, data that can be going to as possible. So, you know, try and keep um, up to date. And, you know, this is a great time to be to be taking a fresh look at it with all the, the new technology investments. 
Next top tip would be have a clear owner. Um, is there an owner for all those public documents out there, especially those policies and things that, like that that are on your SharePoint? Because having an owner means that somebody's accountable for it. Um, and ideally, you know, if you've got a question as well, that means there's somebody to go to to answer that question. So having a having a clear owner, making sure there's a bit of accountability, hopefully helps to keep those documents up to date as well. Now, if you have a think about your filing system today, do you think it's up to date? And have you got three folders? they've got similar content in them. Um, how easy is it to find your documents? And obviously they've got search facilities, but you know, have you have you put the structure in a way that makes sense to you? And if you haven't looked at it for ages, my recommendation is just go back and, and maybe have a have a tidy up there as well, just thinking about that, that structure. Make sure your documents are easy to find. And then Finally, here I've got, um, have you got the appropriate security in place? This is another challenge uh, that I see all the time. Um, people tend to go the easiest route possible. So instead of um, specifying who the document should be shared with, they'll often just show with the whole org. So they've created a link that now can be distributed around the organization um, and you've got no, you, you're not really got a lot of control over that. Uh, unless you change that sharing policy. But you know, do you know where your data is being shared? Um, how often are you go in and having a look and seeing who's got access to your data? I'm going to do a little bit more of a, a, a deeper dive into that in a second. Another question I get a lot of is, is what tool when? Um, so I like to think of this as M365 has got three main areas where data resides. You've got the OneDrive, you've got Teams and you've got SharePoint. And I break these up into me, we and all. OK, so if I think about the me, this is my personal area. So my um, where I'm going to put my personal files, where maybe I'm my first drafts of things before I'm ready to share them. I might collaborate here, but with a small amount of people. So if you think about my development plan, I might share that with my manager. And there's, you know, that's just a small share there. And um, also it's obviously where all my documents are, are auto saved. So I might start a document here and then that document, say it's a policy document, I might then move it to Teams. And I want to move it to Teams where we as a team are going to collaborate and communicate on the development of this document. So I'm going to use probably tools like co-authoring to ask my team to add more um, text to this document or add comments on where they think it could be improved. And then once that's finished, I might then move it to the all section. So this is where I'm putting documents where it's, it's kind of available, a public uh, facing document, maybe to a big department or to the entire organization. And, and you know, it, I would say this is the all category of who I'm sharing it with. But this is usually the finished article. It's you know, where I want people to, to find this data. Um, there's probably retention policies on that. Hopefully there's an owner um, that is, has got a kind of automated update in there to remind them to go and check that 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 document is still a J. But all the way through this journey that my document is taken, I'm hoping this is single source of truth. You know, I don't want to have 15 versions of this document. In the old days, we might have just sent this out by email to 10 people and asked for their comments and then tried to knit that back together. We just don't want to go back down that route. OK, the next thing I'm going to take you through is a bit of a reminder about OneDrive and some of the features that are, that are in there. Um, that help you do things like show with confidence, uh, really understand where you've, you've, how are you managing your files. Now, there are multiple ways to get into OneDrive. You could just type in OneDrive in the search box. You can go to office.com on your browser page and select the OneDrive app. Or you can do what I usually do, which is I select my little blue cloud and I click on that box, which is next to the clock. Um, and I click um, view online. And when I click that, I'm just going to open my demo site. Um, it's going to take me to this online version of my uh, OneDrive. 
Now you can see I've got lots of documents in here and if I'm going down this library I can see quick, quite quickly when I last had some activity and I can see I shared that. Now if I open this document I just want to show you a couple of things that I see quite often and it causes problems. When I go to share I can copy link and I go, great, I'm just going to share this with my colleague Adele and I can copy that and maybe I'll just pop that into a chat to Adele. Now, what I've not done here is taken into account this bit here where the permission is anyone with the link can edit. Now, that means that this link can be shared around the organisation and anybody that receives it can edit my document. And that's not really what I wanted to do. So when I'm thinking about you know, my settings and what I'm sharing, maybe have a better think about who is it you want them to access this data and what do you want them to be able to do with it. Now, the anyone section is most organisations will blank this out and, and make that not available because it's too risky because you can share it outside the organisation. Um, People in Contoso is the one that I probably use the most. So Contoso is, is my is my domain name. So for me, it's Microsoft. But um, I would see this often being selected and then that link just being shared. Uh, what we probably don't use it enough of is the actual um, individual people that you want to, to access this. So let me just go back to that. Um, and then thinking about what you want them to do. Do you want them to be able to edit it? Do you want them to be able to review it? So review just means they can add comments, but they can't actually edit any of the, the slides or, or um, text, or do you just want them to view? And then also thinking, you know, extra security of passwords, but do you want to block the download? So this helps the with a single source of truth, because if you know that people couldn't download it, you know that your document is the only document that is available. OK, now another good thing about um, OneDrive is that you can go and have a look and see what you've shared quite easily. So if I go into this navigation left here and click shared, I can see what's been shared with me and what's been shared by me. So um, the shared by me is the one that I'm really interested in. Should I be sharing employee engagement plan with with everybody? If I click on the three dots here, I can go to manage access and I can see the different ways I've shared this. So, you know, Adele has, has clicked into this. She can view and I can change the level of access I want to give here as well. I could stop showing. Or I could change Adele from view to edit if I wanted to. I can also see if I've shared this document in any groups um, and whether uh, those links have been used. So. I might have shared links to this document multiple times. And if I click on the cog there, I'll be able to see who's accessed it through that link. So in this case, I shared this link. Um, Adele has clicked on it and she's now been added to the people that um, is accessing this document. So just a, a bit of a, a, a pointer there that OneDrive is actually really good to help you understand what you've shared and, and maybe it's good just every now and again, just have a bit of a, a refresh there and think about how you've been showing these documents. Now, I'm just going to go back to my deck a second. The other thing that I tend to use a lot of as well, or as is good to know about, I would say, is um, where your documents are stored. So in this case, um, I'm going to go back to OneDrive and I can click open folder. So I'm going to go on to my open folder. And, and this will be familiar with everybody, I'm sure, because this is how most people access their documents. Now, what you can see here is the status area and the status area um, also tells you where you showed your documents because there's the little people. But the other thing it does is it gives you these little icons. So I can see I've got a cloud, I've got a green circle, I've got a white circle, and both those circles have got ticks in. What does that actually mean? Now, if I just go back to my slide deck here, 
what this is telling you is it's what we call files on demand and it's telling you where those documents are located so where it's got a cloud it means that that, doc that document is available online only now you can quickly send all your documents online only and if you're on a tablet or something that's great just to save space on your tablet but there'll be times where you want to make sure that that document is absolutely on the device and you're not counting on wi-fi to access it so the, the green tick and the white uh, circle means that it's on the device. But if you've got settings that says, you know, upload all my stuff to the cloud, um, you know, that might go back to being cloud only at some point. So the way to absolutely make sure that your documents um, are the ones that you need to make sure are on the device, whether you've got Wi-Fi or not, is the always available. And you can do that right clicking the document and by just selecting always available. So that is everything for me. Thank you so much for, for joining me today and have a lovely rest of your day.